Conductive hearing loss results from a problem in the outer ear or middle ear that prevents sounds from reaching the inner ear in the usual way. While in most cases, conductive hearing loss is temporary, it can be long-term or permanent. Let's learn about some of the reasons a child may have conductive hearing loss. Earwax is produced inside the ear canal to keep the ear healthy and to protect the eardrum. If too much earwax builds up, it can sometimes form a plug that blocks sound from reaching the eardrum. This can create a temporary conductive hearing loss until the earwax is removed. Fluid buildup in the middle ear is common in infants and young children. One common reason is the size and position of the eustachian tube. If this tube becomes swollen or blocked, often due to a cold, negative pressure may start to develop inside the middle ear. Over time, this may cause fluid or mucus to build up inside the middle ear. This makes it harder for the eardrum and the middle ear bones to move properly and for sound vibrations to reach the inner ear. This can cause a temporary conductive hearing loss until the middle ear fluid goes away on its own or is treated. Some children are born with a structural difference of the outer or middle ear. These types of structural conductive hearing losses are less common and are long-term or permanent. Microtia occurs when the pinna, the part of the ear you can see, does not form properly. Microtia alone does not necessarily cause hearing loss. However, many children with microtia also have a missing or narrow ear canal. This is called atresia or stenosis. When the ear canal is absent or significantly narrow, sound is blocked from entering the ear. In other cases of structural conductive hearing loss, the middle ear bones may not be formed typically, which means that sound is not transmitted in the usual way to the inner ear. With all types of conductive hearing loss, once sounds are loud enough to reach the inner ear, the inner ear works in the usual way. To give you an idea of what speech might sound like if your child has conductive hearing loss, we have prepared a hearing loss simulation. You will hear a sentence repeated four times. The first sentence is an example of how speech may sound for a child with severe conductive hearing loss. The second sentence is an example of hearing with a moderate conductive hearing loss. This will be followed by an example of how speech may sound for someone with a mild conductive hearing loss. The last sentence is an example of how speech may sound for a child with typical hearing. Note that these simulations are for demonstration purposes only. Your audiologist can talk to you about your child's hearing levels. It's cold outside. Can you please bring me your socks? It's cold outside. Can you please bring me your socks? Talk to your doctor or contact your local audiology clinic if you have concerns or questions about your child's ears or hearing. If your child has permanent conductive hearing loss, it is important to become involved with early services to support communication and language. Your healthcare team is available to support and guide you every step of the way. Parents tell us it is also very helpful to talk to other parents of children who are deaf or hard of hearing and to meet adults who have grown up deaf or hard of hearing. Your audiologist and early intervention team can help you make these connections.